We always learn something new, and I'm just very, very grateful that he is here and he's representing uh, so many workers. Uh, we are, we have a meeting along the way, and we have taken a lot of uh, of their time, and we have overcome sometimes very real fears to take action. And I want to show you some of those actions here. Um, here we have workers coming to uh, the OSHA office in Syracuse. This uh, one of the workers who became a leader in this campaign, uh, David, his finger was lacerated. Here is what happened. Workers' compensation does apply to them. And here he is. Uh, here. He, uh, Along with a, a, another amazing leader, Eliseo, they are teaching the inspectors at OSHA what it's like to work at a dairy farm. So when they come to a dairy farm, they know what is that place. They also are aware of the workers that are there and sometimes what risk do they have to speak up. So if a worker tells you right away everything is fine, or a lot of these inspectors might do an interview for a worker where on the eyesight of the employer. Well, think about those things. Where um, the environment uh, that these workers are is uh, very oppressive. It's not the same as many other workplaces. So they got to be aware of that. So we hope that um, they learn a lot from the workers and the workers also learn from OSHA and learn to trust government agencies. And we understand when they don't trust them because they have been under a lot of um, oppression and there's a lot of persecution and there's a lot of injustice. So it is a matter of trust. It's so important that they, they uh, OSHA knows about them, and they know about OSHA, they know about the Department of Labor. So we have been working about getting access to the laws that are already there, the few laws that protect farm workers, because there are so many exclusions, as you know. So here we are, this is a training, a train the trainer. About 12 workers, among them Jose, took a risk. A lot of them, even just to know their rights, just to know about health and safety, they are fearful that the employer will find out. So this picture shows that they got a certificate. They, after work, after 12 hour shift, they participated in this training that was um, sponsored by one of our founders that is the Interfaith Workers Justice. They came from Chicago, one of the trainers, Maria Gutierrez. And, um, she did this training for three nights. And so after work, they were here. They were uh, learning about health and safety and how to train others, how to talk to others about it. And here they're covering their faces with their certificates because of the fear of retaliation. Um, and that's a very telling picture. And this is at their trailer where they live. The employer doesn't know, and they cannot know about this because of retaliation in many places. And here we have uh, courageous workers also who, we organized a delegation to go to OSHA on June of last year. And that day was a long day. We picked up people from far away to bring them to Syracuse. It was Carly, it was myself and the director of the uh, OSHA. Um, the regional director of, of OSHA in, Sy uh, in Syracuse, Chris Adams here, and uh, staff um, Ron Williams, and three amazing workers. Thanks to them, and they were representing other workers. This is the, uh, the result of Jose uh, recruiting people to take action, and, and other workers too. They were represented many workers. They came over and they spoke about health and safety in those places, in the farms, 
They spoke from, uh, in their experiences, from small farms to large farms. They show scars, they talk about accidents, they talk about the chemicals that they handle, the livestock that they have to work with, and how that, those things are hazards. And it was so interesting to see some of the staff from OSHA kind of be so um, surprised about these workplaces because even they had this notion that the, the farm, the traditional farm, right, very, very small operation, very, uh, you know, just milking the cows, very, nothing about chemicals and about falls and about uh, all these accidents that they were talking about. Uh, Kevin, one of the young workers, after this, he went ahead and make a, made a complaint because um, on a span of two weeks, he got injured three times in a huge farm in uh, upstate New York. And one of those injuries, he was handling um, chemicals that they use to, um, it's a solution that they use to prevent fungus for the cow's feet. And they have to put it in this container and they have to make the, the cows uh, walk through it. And he was not given any equipment, any protective equipment. He was not told what he was handling. He was not given anything. So he put this thing and then cows walk by and then it splashes on his eyes. And he was, um, he says he was blind for about 30 minutes, uh, excruciating pain, and he, there was no help. It was like 3 a.m. in the morning. Nobody was working with him. He was working alone with all these, with chemicals and with all these huge animals. And no matter how hard he screamed, nobody heard him. And he just felt so much pain. He went and grabbed the water that the cows drink, which was contaminated with all kinds of things. He put it in his eyes. And then he had to walk like 30 minutes to the house where the employees had given him. It was very far away. And it was after that day, and that was after other two accidents. One it was a fall, another one he was um, pinned uh, by a cow with, through a, a metal uh, bar. And so three things that happened to him. That day he said, no more. I, I cannot work here anymore. I'm not going to die, he said, for 7.25 an hour. That was last year. Um, and he made a decision and also, but thanks to Jose, he made further. Uh, today we heard from an employer, uh, tell Jose and tell us, tell your coworkers to, um, to speak with their feet. Meaning, if you don't like it, leave the workplace. And they will, and the employers will learn. No, they will not learn. They will just get somebody else and put them in the same situation. And when they are injured, they will either leave or the employers fire them. But what Kevin did is what we are talking about, which is organize and act together. And so he did not leave. He did something thanks to the organizing that Jose was doing. So he made a complaint uh, with OSHA. That place got inspected, and now there are two eyewash stations on that place. It's a small victory. They only got fined $1,000. This is a huge farm. Um, but after this meeting also, we requested a local emphasis program that Jose was talking about, and we were so grateful because OSHA heard our, um, what we were saying, and they started this program in October of last year. There has been some pushback uh, from uh, the farm industry and the Farm Bureau. They have organized themselves very quickly because they have a lot of money. They uh, are together in associations too, like uh, the Farm Bureau and many other ones. And they have, um, they, they, they got the help from politicians. Seven of them, uh, the, the main leader of that group was Congressman Hanna, and uh, they wrote a letter on behalf of farmers in the industry to OSHA telling them to indefinitely delay this program. And what they were more concerned about was that this program was going to bring inspections to farms. Not all the farms. It was gonna, it's going to be randomly selected a small number of farms. So according to some uh, research, there are 5,600 uh, farms in New York. But there is, yes, in New York, a very, very tiny number 
um, of farms will be inspected. To give you an idea, in Wisconsin, a similar program was started three years ago. In the first year, only 12 farms, dairy farms, were inspected. So at least there's a fear of enforcement that makes some employers do something, because they don't know if it's going to be them. But for this particular dairy farm, um, uh, LEP, the, the, the farm industry, the dairy farm industry, they were able to push OSHA to exempt from inspection small farms with 10 or less workers, and also to delay the inspection part all the way to July. So there's only going to be three months where there'll be inspection, but most of the LEP is going to be, is being already outreach and education, which we are not opposed to it. We are very in support, but we believe that what is needed is enforcement because this information is been there all the time. Um, and a lot of, uh, I mean, they are all fall under the jurisdiction of OSHA unless they have uh, farms with less than 10, 10 or less workers. They have been exempted since um, 1976, um, which we think is an injustice because a worker like Francisco Ortiz, who is here, he died in a so-called family farm with less than 10 workers. Uh, he died last year. He had been working there for nine years, and in the farm, didn't get inspected by OSHA. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration couldn't step in to make an inspection and make sure that, investigate what killed him, because it wasn't a freak accident. It was, an, uh, he was killed uh, when he was uh, working, and there was a faulty machine, and we don't know exactly what happened, but we know from his wife, because we got to talk to her, she's been supportive of this campaign. I was so moved yesterday, because she has seen some of the pictures that we've been posting on Facebook. She's in Veracruz, Mexico, and she put a, um, a comment that she, she was so grateful that we were doing this for all workers, and, and she's doing this. She's allowing us to speak uh, about what happened to Francisco, and, um, because she cares, and she wants things to change. And so she told us that uh, Francisco had been working uh, for nine years at this farm, that he used to have to fix machines that were a lot of the times they were not in good condition. He was not trained to fix those machines. Uh, he had to work long hours. He was always tired. Uh, after nine years, he was starting to talk about coming back finally. Um, and, and he got uh, killed in this other type machine, uh, trying to, to fix it, it got jammed, and instead uh, the, the employers, that was what is, was expected of him to do, he, but he never got training for that or anything. So, and here's another uh, worker we interview, uh, uh, Felix, this is his father, Porfirio, Felix also allowed us to use this picture. He let us have it to show. His father died also in a farm in um, upstate New York in, in another uh, workplace in a farm. And there's been 55 uh, deaths since 2006 in dairy farms. A lot of those deaths are in New York, yes. A lot of those deaths have been uh, or fatalities have been um, farmers, the owners, or family members, or um, workers, local workers, but more and more there have been Latino workers. Um, we been, I have heard from workers, and, and uh, one of them, like Lazaro, who got uh, injured by a bull and almost got his, his eye, he was working at a very small farm, he says, Health and safety in, in the dairy farms is, is also going to be beneficial for the owners, for the farmers, um, because there's a lot of mentality that farms is, is, uh, or small farms, you know, this is my place and I know what I'm doing. No regulation is going to tell me what I'm supposed to do, but he cares. So we care here about everyone and it's in solidarity with all the people that are um, losing their lives in farms. Uh, farms uh, or agriculture is one of the uh, deadliest uh, job places 
I was just wanted to show you, and here are some, uh, we started to defend, having to defend the local emphasis program from these politicians. Uh, and so this is for you, because uh, if you want to sign it, and we want to show a lot of signatures, we're going to be seeing politicians. We already met with Dan Maffei, one of the seven congressmen that signed the letter uh, asking to indefinitely de delay this program. Uh, we were able to uh, get him to change his position because um, he says he's a friend of labor and uh, workers' rights, and so we have to call him in front of labor and say this is health and safety uh, for workers and, and you should care. And um, now we're looking to also have a letter to present in support of this program so that OSHA can say, yeah, there's support for this. So if you can help us with that. Also, that way we will keep you informed about what we're doing in this campaign. Thank you.